Convention delegates, please give Council 28 welcome to the Attorney General of this great state, Bob Ferguson. Thanks so much. Give it up for your new members. Thanks so Thanks, and the, the folks who escorted me up are some of those new members, uh, Assistant Attorneys General, uh, a group of the 600 that we have in the office, and they do fantastic work. I so appreciate the video, right? I so appreciate the video you had. Oh, we got more folks over there, yeah. I so appreciate the video you put together that gives a sense of the work that they do. Um, we have about 640 Assistant Attorneys General in the state of Washington. They do represent every state board, commission, agency, and the people of the state of Washington. If the state's doing it, there's a lawyer behind it, right? So they impact so many parts of worker issues in this state, as you can imagine, and just the well-being of the people. And they do a fantastic job. Trust me, the state AG's office here is the best public law firm in the country. Give it up for those folks. They work hard for you every day. And it was mentioned, I think Greg mentioned that, you know, in order for them to be able to organize, first things first, a bill had to be passed. There's been a long-standing statute that's been around for decades that prohibited it. So a law had to be passed by the state legislature. And I just want to say I so appreciate, you know, my team of attorneys who advocate for that, folks here, Greg, and others who we worked with. Uh, obviously, my office supported that. We testified, leadership of my office testified at the committee hearings to get that law passed, which then allowed for the possibility for folks to organize. So it's been a team effort on many, many levels, as Greg knows. And I just want to say thanks. And uh, I'm so proud to have a team that's now organized, fighting for you every day, and really a part of this wonderful organization. So thank you so much for that. And by the way, Greg, you mentioned that we, we had one week to get that done, I think, right? So one thing lawyers can appreciate is a deadline. Got a deadline, you got to get done. We know how to get it done. So thanks for that. Um, so hey, it's great to see you all. I'm in, I'm in an especially good mood today because, uh, like many of you, I'm a big Seahawks fan, and so all right, and so I, I rarely get to a Hawks game. You know, maybe once every couple of years. But I've got an 11 year old son who's a diehard Hawks fan, and so he's he's been wanting to go game, wanting to go game, wanting to go to game. So we went. He went to his first Seahawks game last night. And, and, so I literally told him after the game, you may never see as good a one again. Uh, that's as good as it gets. So uh, he, we just had a great experience last night. If you go to a Hawks game, you get a certificate, a first game uh, certificate. We got that. So my son's a happy boy. Seahawks won. And it's great to be with all of you as well. So hey, a couple things. One is, uh, Lee, it's great to see you. And uh, I heard great things about his speech earlier today, Lee Saunders, right? And. And I just want to say that, as my team knows, um, in the office, is a the way I look at this job is that I'm one of seven kids, six boys, one long-suffering sister in my family of seven, and uh, and my siblings all work in different in different areas. And I think I've mentioned to some of you before, um, and the other audience where I speak is that uh, all my siblings work hard. We were raised by hardworking parents. Uh, my mom was a union member, um, and uh, but one of my brothers in particular, his name's John, um, and he's, he's uh, uh, a machinist and now a foreman up in Alaska. He works in the fishing industry, helps put fish on our, on our tables. And uh, when he was probably about 18 years old, he started going to Alaska for his summers. And, uh, and he's been a machinist and worked his way up. And you know, I, when he goes to Alaska, he usually goes up there in April now, leaves his family, and he comes back in September, he's still up there. And when he goes, he works every day. He does not get Sundays off. Uh, he works 12, 14, 16 hours every day. I called him on his birthday at 10 o'clock at night uh, about a month and a half ago. And I said, John, you gonna get any time for your birthday? He said, I'm hoping to get to the bar to have a drink at some point tonight. But it wasn't likely. That was his birthday. And so the way I look is, if John was not paid every dime that he earns, and he earns it, believe me, right? or if he was not provided a safe work environment for the work that he does, which is challenging work and long hours with heavy machinery in a tough environment, right? I mean, as Greg knows, that would piss me off. And I have a stronger word for it than that, but that would piss me off for this company, right? It really, really would. And the way I look at it is, well, if that's the way I feel about my brother, John, who's working hard, I know you're all working hard, right? I know workers all across the state are working hard. 
Well, if it would piss me off if John didn't get his money or didn't have a safe work environment, well, that's how I feel about every worker in the state of Washington, right? Every worker, that's how I feel about it. Because, because that worker, of course, is somebody's brother, son, daughter, mother, father, right? Right? They have that feeling about that person. And I have a role, and my team has a role, in protecting workers um, in the state of Washington and making sure there's a level playing field for them. And look, there's many issues I'm not going to go on too long, but uh, in many different contexts. But you know, as an example, um, fast food workers in our, in our state and across our country. You work in the fast food industry. You got a tough job, right? Well, there's actually these things called no poach agreements. So let's say you work for a fast food company, Burger King, pick the one you want. And this is in other industries as well, but let's take fast food. If you want to move from one Burger King to another Burger King, maybe it's a promotion, better wages, shorter commute, you name the issue. You cannot move from that one Burger King to get a job in another Burger King. Why is that? Because the national headquarters of Burger King has entered into a, what they call a no poach agreement with that local franchise. The contract you never see is the worker. You don't see it, you don't sign it, you don't know it exists. But that agreement says no Burger King employee can go work for another Burger King. It's a no poach agreement. People talk about a rigged system, there you go. It's a rigged system, right? Well, when we found out about this, New York Times wrote a big, a big expose about how ubiquitous these are in certain industries. I asked my legal team, is that legal? Can they do that? My legal team looked and said, we don't think it is. So we started investigation into this industry. We have now eliminated no poach agreements in Washington State and across the country for 93 different corporations, 93 of them. And, th and these are some of the biggest, I mean, this impacts literally millions of workers, some of the biggest corporations. And the way it works is I can make changes for Washington State, right? I can't necessarily change it around the country. But when re reaching out to these companies and said, hey, what you're doing is illegal, here are your choices, okay? Your choices are A, you can eliminate your no poach agreements, get rid of them on all your contracts, eliminate it, and promise you'll never go into them again. That's option A. And you do that across the country, not just in Washington. Every entity you have, you eliminate it. That's option one. Option B is I'm filing a lawsuit against you. Those are your options. There is no negotiation on this point. That's it. And so initially there was some resistance, but after a while, they've all come to realize we're quite serious about it, and that's why 93 have eliminated them. And so we're just going industry by industry by industry, and that is an example of the role of the Office Attorney General, being an advocate for the people and for working people in the state in a very direct way. And in fact, I just mailed my, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and that's just one example of the role that we can have. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is, in some ways sort of less dramatic in terms of a litigation standpoint, but deeply impactful as well is, you know, we of course all had to face this outrageous decision from the U.S. Supreme Court on this Janus decision, right? Which by the way, the Supreme Court in the 5-4 decision overturned a precedent of a unanimous U.S. Supreme Court in the 1970s. So think about how far, right, you had a unanimous decision. For any court to change a precedent is a, you do that carefully, okay, to put it mildly. They change a unanimous decision by a 5-4 decision that has huge impacts on working men and women in this country. And we work with your leadership and other labor unions and say, hey, what can we as attorneys general across the country do to be helpful? And one thing came out is that, well, hey, let's analyze this opinion and let's make sure that's not interpreted in a more broad fashion. In other words, there are many things this Janus decision does not impact about the rights to organize and other things. So AGs like myself issued advice essentially to the people of the state and to our clients, making clear that really that opinion is relatively narrow. Bad decision, don't get me wrong, but we can play that role as well of providing guidance to state actors who have a huge impact on the organizing efforts of working men and women across the country to make sure we're being clear on what the impacts of that law are. We work closely with Governor Inslee on that, and that's an important tool that we have as well. And then just last thing I wanna say is that, you know, it's, uh, our office has been busy. Um, what tends to get the headlines are things we do often at the national level, right? We have filed 50 lawsuits against the administration. I get it. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> thanks. And, and uh, what, I, what I'll say is I get that some people like that and some people do not like that. I mean, I, I get that. Let's just have an honest conversation about that, right? I, I understand that. I represent the whole state. I travel the whole state. I get that. Um, 
We haven't lost a case yet, though. I'll just say that. I'll just point that. I will point that out. But one thing I say, if I'm speaking to an audience that is unhappy with that litigation, what I say is, Donald Trump was not the first president that I filed a lawsuit against. The first president I filed a lawsuit against was a man I deeply respect and admire, Barack Obama. I sued his administration. When I first became attorney general, filed a lawsuit. And you know what the issue was that I filed a lawsuit against his administration? Worker safety at Hanford. That was the issue, worker safety at Hanford. That was, my, that was my very first lawsuit against the president, against a politician. There is no more, there's not a politician in the world who I respect more than Barack Obama. I want to be clear about that. I'm a huge fan, okay? I've got a picture of him with my daughter in my office, okay? I think that guy is great. But the fact that I think Barack Obama is great, the relevance that has with my decision to protect workers at Hanford, I'll tell you exactly how much influence it had. Zero, no influence, irrelevant, not relevant, right? All I'm focused on is my job of protecting workers. I don't really care who the president is. All I care is his administration's not getting the job done at protecting workers. That's it. There's nothing else to talk about. And so that is the focus that I want my team to have. And if that means we're taking on a president or taking on the largest corporations in the country or making sure that state agencies understand the limits of a Supreme Court decision that can be impactful on working men and women in the state, that's the role that I see that we have in the office of the Attorney General. So I just want you to know that, you know, when, uh, you know, being Attorney General, it's, uh, it's a job I love. I'll start with that. But just to conclude is that it's, I love it because I get to work with great employees, right? Like the folks who have just become members of this wonderful organization, right? <laughs> and, but also it's, it's, the thing is you, in the job, you can help people. Right? You can be an advocate for people, and the law is a powerful tool. It is. And if you are working at the Burger King trying to navigate some damn no poach agreement you never signed, how the hell are you going to do that? I mean, honestly, how the hell are you going to do it? Right? You're a worker at Hanford, and they're not providing you a safe work environment, and you're getting sick, or your coworkers are getting sick, but you need that damn job because your kids got to go to school, right? And you got to put food on the table. Well, how the hell are you going to take on the administration? How are you going to do that? Right? Well, the good news is you have an office attorney general, and that's what we can do. That's what we can do. And the law, and the, and the law, and the law allows, if you, final, I'm going on too long, so, but I'm gonna say this. The great thing about the law is if you walk, if you walk into a courtroom, if you walk into a courtroom, it's a level playing field. Doesn't matter who you're taking on, a judge, all a judge cares about are the facts of your case, the law, the Constitution, that is it. Now, the trick is you've gotta have a lawyer or be able to afford in a lawyer to get to the courtroom. Big issue, a lot of folks don't have that. But the way I view our job is to be that voice for Washingtonians. That's the job, because if you've got one of your new members now, you've got these assistant attorneys general, if they're in that courtroom advocating for you, those big corporations will buckle over and over again. Even the president finds himself losing 22 straight cases in a row against those assistant attorneys general, right? That's how it works. So I want to thank you for having me here today. It's an honor to be with you. Go Hawks. Great to see you. Have a great day, everybody.